What do you do for a living? I'm a medical doctor specializing in obstetrics. So tell me where you're from. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. Tell me what brought you from South Africa to Arkansas. Well, I've had this problem with my neck and jaw for seven years, yeah. approximately seven, eight years. I've been to hundreds of dentists, neurologists, neurosurgeons, prostodontists, orthodontists, you name it. Yeah. Each had their take on what was wrong with me, but unfortunately none of them could get treatment right. And eventually I ended up at the psychiatrist, several psychiatrists, got put on a, a whole package of antidepressants and ended up at the chronic pain clinic. I thought I was beginning to feel like I was crazy. And then I realized, no, it's not. My pain was real mm -hmm. and it wasn't just in my head. So fortunately for me, I did a lot of research and I managed to find Dr. Nick the crazy dentist in Arkansas who was crazy enough to go to to areas where people don't venture and yes he's actually knows more than most of the specialists the maxillofacial specialists and prostodontists or the dentists in South Africa about TMJ disorders and I did the DTR on Thursday and basically um, I have found relief I would say I was, my pain initially started at a level of about 100, 110%. I was totally non-functional, battling with things like brushing my hair and even turning to the right, driving was a mission, or well, all sorts of normal, well, what everyone considers normal. But uh, over the weekend, I can safely say, and I also had a bit of Botox done as well in the occipital, sternocleidomastoid, well, that's basically base of the head and neck and the Shoulder. shoulders done and yes I found that from 110% disability I'm now probably gone down to 40-50% so you're far better far better definitely so to be clear we didn't just DTR you we screened you with the neural occlusion protocols mm -hmm. we decided that you were a sketchy case for bite adjustment and we knew that there were other layers present. So we knew that you had cervical inputs for sure, based mm -hmm. on our exams and our metrics. And you likely also had sympathetic inputs. So we also hit you up with, uh, we were breaking up trigger points with anesthetic, and we were also doing some Botox as a palliative deal. Mm -hmm. The Botox has only been three or four days, so it hasn't kicked in yet. But the anesthetic gave you instantaneous relief that apparently seems to be lasting a few days mm -hmm. because the Botox cannot have kicked in yet. Usually that's five to 10 days out. Mm -hmm. So the DTR seemed to have helped you as well. And the day we did your DTR, how was it like at the end of that procedure before I even touched you with the anesthetics or the Botox? Remember the first hour or mm -hmm. so we were talking about it. You felt quite a bit of relief? Yes, no, I mean, I actually felt I could fall asleep. I, well, to me, it feels like my quality of sleep has been terribly poor for the past seven, eight years. How's it been this weekend? Problem. Well, this weekend on Friday and Saturday, I slept like a baby. So the neck blocks, mm. you know, that was profound too. We did the D, we did the, the bite adjustment, the DTR, then we went to neck blocks on you, mm. right? And all of a sudden you started noticing that things were different, mm. right? Well, yeah, well, basically, previously I was actually scared. I, mean, I couldn't, anyone would touch my neck and I would jump. Yeah. So it was like having rock uh, you know like even on my shoulders it was like two pieces of rock on your shoulder rocks on your shoulders yeah. so basically now definitely my range of uh, movement and things like that is much much more improved and previously i mean i couldn't even tilt my head backwards flex and extend my neck and basically now it i can do it without much problems any advice for patients well, the thing is, I think if you suspect or you have been diagnosed with a, a TMJ disorder, firstly, I think it's important that you get properly diagnosed because that was my first problem. I was getting bounced from doctor to doctor no diagnosis, and no right. diagnosis. So the thing is, uh, basically, no one could properly diagnose me. So hence, I never actually got proper treatment. So I think it's probably the way Dr. Nick works and 
by finding a correct diagnosis and if you look at the, yeah, the timeline, then basically you can work from there. Once you have a diagnosis, whether it's good or bad, you can basically know you know what you're dealing with. Yep. So Easier even to treat. Yeah, well, the thing is, if you don't know, and basically one, ten, several doctors tell you different things, you yourself are confused. And, and the then thing you start is, going is, nuts. Exactly. Essentially, and then they tell you you're depressed. Yes. Because they made you nuts. Yes. <laughs> so essentially, I think uh, yeah, I think getting getting the, the proper and correct diagnosis, which Dr. Nick has been very thorough, and he's done every single test from joint vibration analysis, you name it, he's done it. And CT, MRI, CT, yeah, everything. Yeah. And basically, he puts all of the results together and he gives you a proper diagnosis. And then that, to me, seems logical sense to do. Because then from there, you know the way forward. Otherwise, you're lost. Yeah. You're totally lost. And that's where I were, was prior to coming to Arkansas. I mean, people were asking me, why are you going to Arkansas of all places for, for treatment? Mm -hmm. They were like shocked. Don't you obviously want to go to some bigger city or whatever? And I said, no, but the doctor that I need, and he, uh, from watching, watching his testimonials, he has all the experience and all the, the diagnostic tools that I need to get to where I need to be. That don't exist in South Africa. Exactly. They need to send and realize, you know what, I'm not equipped to handle this and send. There are people out there that can help you. There's a few. Yeah. And the Center for Neural Occlusion, the whole reason I formed that was mm. so that people don't have to travel half a world to come see mm. someone like me. We need to get more guys out there. Mm. So that's the whole point of the CNO. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. That's why Dr. Alford and Dr. Abrams were here. That's right. Mm. They were here. We had our training, our third level, while you were here, and you were gracious mm. enough to let mm. them come in on this. Oh, they were great guys. And they learned a lot. Yeah, from no, you. Shame. they 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 two wonderful guys. Huh? Yeah, they're yeah. amazing. You know, the thing is, at least you are making the effort to learn about it, yeah. and as you said, well, it gives us people like me and and it makes me a better hope. nurse. Exactly, but it gives us hope. Otherwise, I was sitting there lost. I mean, right. the thing is, the one doctor would say, go to another doctor and then go to the physician, then yeah. go to the chronic pain clinic, and it was just endless. Huh? Yeah, if anything, you, you hit it right on the head right there, that four-letter word. It gives them hope. Mm. No, definitely. Yeah. Because, I mean, before, prior to coming to see you, I was, you know, I was at the bottom of the pips, uh, pits, and honestly, you know what, it was, it was hard, huh? And I now was look even. At you. You're smiling. Yeah, I know. I mean, you're it was hard to. You're sleeping pretty well. Exactly. I mean, I won't lie to you. Before, prior to this, I even at random times had suicidal ideations because yeah. the thing is, how do you function? Because you your pain is private. It's invisible with yeah, TMJ disorder. Nobody recognizes. Yeah, exactly. It's not like yeah. you know you've got a broken leg and a cast or yeah. whatever or, you know wheelchair and people people don't realize it. But TMJ pain, your pain is Sucks. private and it's invisible. So Sucks. the thing is, no one, no one actually, when they look at you, you look normal, so they think nothing's wrong with you. But then they don't realize what you're going through. Yep, I mm. hear you. All right, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, if there weren't people like you, then I'd probably be, yeah, I don't know where I'd be. <laughs>